Here we have all of the components to build the ultimate 2013 Mac Pro. The most important component being the Mac Pro itself. I picked that up in the last video. You can go check that out if you'd like to. This thing is beautiful. A few pieces we have to upgrade are, of course, we have right here an eGPU. This is a Razer Core X. I got this used on Facebook for 225 bucks. The next little component here we have is E5 2697V2. 12 core for $35, that's crazy. And then finally, the final upgrade I'm going to make is the graphics card that I'm going to put in this machine, and that is an AMD reference 5700 XT. Right now, I'm going to go perform some open heart surgery on this machine here to even upgrade and put this processor in. It's a worthy upgrade, but it's also remarkably difficult. I recorded every single part of me taking apart and putting this computer together, and it was over 50 minutes of content. I sped up the first half of it, and I think this image right here just shows how ridiculous upgrading this computer is. This is every single part laid out just to get to the CPU. All right. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Everything's been done. Everything's been put back together. And now it's time I'll turn, oh wait, it's turning on. This was the first boot? Wait, is it on? Why is it lighting up? Oh, okay, so it was off, but it was like delivering power. Okay, so it, 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 we're turning it on. Let's go, it's changing. It's too easy. Wow, that's terrifying. That is the that is needlessly complicated. I mean, I have a suggestion. I think that if if you're going to perform surgery on me and my body, I need you to upgrade the CPU inside a 2013 Mac Pro first. And if you could do that, you can cut me open and slice me open all you want. But until then, you <laughs> lay off. That's unbelievably complicated, but it's done. Number of cores, 12. You can see that right there. That, that is a beautiful thing. I can't believe it worked. I was a little afraid that it wasn't gonna fit. I, I, looking at the CPUs, they're, they're slightly different. The, the 12 core one is like wider. And CPUs in the same socket are normally the exact same size. So I'm going to figure out how to get an eGPU to work, because I'm pretty sure Thunderbolt 2 eGPUs are also needlessly complicated. Apple just doesn't want people to use their stuff, do they? They don't want they don't want to use the stuff for a long time. They want you to buy it and then have to replace it in like two years. That's all they want you to use your stuff for. All right, so sorry, no good lighting. This is what you get because I needed that power cable. So I have everything hooked up, I think. So I'm going to plug this in here and I don't know, I don't know if it'll switch to this if it's already been powered on. So I may have to restart the Mac and then we'll plug this. I hear the fans kicking on, that's good. So it's recognizing something. So I plug that. I think I'm the best. <laughs> Is that actually working? Wow. All right, well now I have to replace this with my current computer because I'm gonna be, I gotta run some benchmarks on it and then I'm gonna use it for the next week. So this is my current desk setup. I, okay, ignore the cables. That annoys me just on film. Look at that, look how ugly that is. So here's how it is. I have built this sketchy little, it, it works. Uh, this is what holds my computer and I have every cable routed here. Um, I think I can put it just right there, just right on top of the desk, the Mac Pro, and then put the eGPU down here. Uh, the only problem is, is like, I wanna make sure I can see the Mac Pro. I mean, the whole point of the Mac Pro is that it looks pretty. And I mean, I have a more powerful computer, so I'm downgrading because it's pretty. So I wanna see the Mac Pro. <laughs> So I want to make sure I can see that darn thing right there. I also think I want to have the cinema display where this is. I don't have the vase amount for it, so I'm just going to have to sit on the desk, but I'm going to have to move that because the cinema display, way better colors, higher pixel density. I'm downloading some benchmarks so we can see just how much better this $35 CPU upgrade and probably closer to $500 GPU upgrade, how much that actually helps and if it's something that if you add this machine, if you should consider, or if you're considering buying this machine. Okay, so I ran some preliminary benchmarks on the Mac Pro 2013, and I ran two different versions. One of them I ran, thankfully, before I upgraded, because I'm not taking that thing apart two, two more times, to downgrade it, then re-upgrade it. 
Uh, so the single core score on Geekbench 6 with the four core processor inside of it was 796 and the multi-core score was 2,849. And then with the 12 core upgrade, not surprisingly, the single core score dropped down to 678, which is a little over 10%. It's probably a little bit closer to 15% degradation in a single core performance. And then multi-core score jumped up to 5,090. And all of this seems weird to me. I would have thought that if you took a four core processor and then you added eight cores to it, reduce the clock speeds a little bit, you would get far greater than less than double on the multi-core performance. I think that could potentially have just been the test that I used, but that was a little disappointing. I have casually started to edit videos on this computer, and while I don't have a full review on how powerful and how long you should keep this and should you even consider buying this, it, it's good. It, it actually is editing 4K footage from a Canon R6, not the high bitrate 4K, but the lower bitrate 4K. I always film in that anyway. I think it looks just as good or it looks good enough. It, it's been editing the video on that very, very well without the eGPU. I did run some benchmarks with the eGPU in and the OpenCL score, again, another Geekbench test was 20,955 with the D300s and it jumped all the way up to 54,789 which is almost, almost a 3X in performance, which is a, around what I kind of figured it would be. I was kind of hoping the, the eGPU would perform a little bit better, but over Thunderbolt 2, you lose a lot of bandwidth with that graphics card, a lot more than what I kind of think is okay. I mean, if you're buying a $400 graphics card and you're really only getting 75 or 60% of the performance, $250 graphics card. So if you were to do something like this, I would consider not buying the eGPU at all because along with the eGPU, you have to buy a Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3 adapter and a Thunderbolt 2 cable, which is another almost $100. So it starts to get exceedingly expensive to actually even have the eGPU. And then if you do get the eGPU, I can't get this thing to sleep. Every single time I come back downstairs to mess around on this computer, to use the computer, I have to shut it off, switch the display cable back into the back of the Mac Pro, turn it on, and then reconnect the eGPU. So I'm just not gonna use it. I don't think that you should do it either. I would suggest if you're gonna put some money into this thing, buy the 12 core processor or the eight core, and then maybe get some RAM and potentially a faster SSD. Those are the few upgrades that I would consider doing if I were you, but I'm going to use this thing for a week as is, and I will let you know in a week how it is. And in the meantime, I hope you guys have a great week and I will see you in the next one. This has been Scott with Techno Eclipse. Peace out.